Hello and welcome to Excel-DashboardTemplates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel-DashboardTemplates.com so you're sure to get the latest charting techniques, tips, and tricks to make some incredible dashboards for your executive and your company. All right, uh, today I'm continuing with a post that I did before, so please check out my video channel or go to my blog and you can see how we did this technique. But we had an Excel user that had uh, a chart and they wanted to remove the outliers. So this point here and this point here, they're not quite on the line that they really wanted to show. They wanted to say, how can I get rid of those outliers without just going and physically deleting each one of the cells? Um, and so we came up with the solution here that uh, you can enter in a different value and it will get excluded using the not applicable function. So we've got that formula there. You can read all about that and see the other video as well. Um, so what this does is when you chart this range in Excel, you will see that you get this chart here. So January 4th is gone and January 7th is gone. Um, not exactly what the user wanted. The user actually, their example had gaps in here because they had physically deleted these points. Well, it turns out Excel, when you use the NA function, so it does not plot that data point, but when you create a line, the not applicable or NA function actually connects the data points. So some ingenious people like Andy Pope previously have created some examples where you mask this line uh, with white. Uh, only works, unfortunately, if you don't have grid lines or if you have no other ranges that might go through these masked or covered over or white uh, line segment blocks or gaps for this NA chart. Uh, so I wanted to go through and show you exactly how I did create a broken gapped line chart in Excel using the NA function. Here it is right here. You can see we've got no or we've got a gap between each line segment. The grid lines show up. Uh, there's no masking involved. And let's go ahead and show you how we went about doing that. Okay, so we have our data all set up over here, and we've got our formulas that if we uh, type a different outlier range, like let's say we type in two, hit enter, notice that my outlier data has changed. I have two more NAs, one at January 3rd and one at January 10th. So as you just modify that, your uh, formulas put in the NA. You can read all about this on the previous post and video. Uh, it's got a step-by-step -step tutorial. But So we're not going to spend our time on creating the formula to exclude the outliers, but what we're going to do is spend our time showing you how to create line segments for these three data points, these two data points, and these three data points uh, for as many different combinations of line segments that you might have in this range. And we're going to do this with formulas so it's all set up for you and uh, you can just modify your data and it will create the gaps in the line segments for you. So we're going to create a separate data range for our chart. So you have to leave this here because we need to use these NAs. Um, we can't really embed these formulas, uh, at least that I know of, maybe with array formulas, but let's go ahead and do it just uh, in a more simple way. Uh, so we've got um, our chart data, and in this column here, I'm going to actually put just put in our uh, horizontal axis, and in this case, it is going to be A2, which is our... Uh, date, so January 1st, and that's all we need to do there, and we'll copy that down in a second. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have five individual line segments, and we need to create this with a formula. It's going to be a simple if statement, and so we're going to do some logical test, and we're, that's where the complicated part is. Then we're going to have a value if it's true, and in our case, if our value is true, we want to put in the not applicable function. You can read all about the not applicable function uh, on how to hide pie chart slices on my blog and website. There's a video as well. Uh, so make sure you head over there if you're not understanding the not applicable function. Now, if the value is false, we actually want to put in the value that you see over here in F2. Now, since we're going to copy this to the right, I need to lock down the F part of our F2. So I'm hitting F4. So I hit F4 three times, and now you see it's dollar sign, which is an absolute reference for F2. Once again, you can also read about that in my blog and see a video as well. All right, so we have our conditional part of what happens if it's true or false. Now let's make our actual logical test. Here, we're going to do three different logical tests. The first one is we're going to, so uh, since we're doing the three different logical tests, what we need to do is type in an OR statement, because if any of these three things are true, we are going to 
uh, say that it's true, and let's put in a not applicable. Um, and so if any of these are true, meaning that the line segment has ended or this point is not applicable, there's uh, several different criteria. So let's do our first logical one. First one we want to do is we want to count. So we are going to count what is in H2, and we're going to we want to make this lock down at H2. Um, so we're going to go ahead and lock it down on the column of H by putting a dollar sign in there. And then I want to do a range, because I'm going to copy this to the right. Um, so I want to just put in H2 again, and this time make it a relative reference. So it just continues to copy along with us, uh, and it keeps H2 locked down. And then it'll go H3, H4, H4. I'm sorry, it'll go uh, I2, I4, I5, um, or it'll, I'm sorry, I2, J2, K2. It'll just keep copying to the right. And uh, um, what this does is this is going to count and see if we have already used this value in one of our line segments already. And so if the count is uh, equal to a number, which is the count that we have there, uh, then that will set our value to true in this OR statement. Now, um, since we are using a date for our horizontal axis in H2, there is a number there already, so I want to exclude that from our calculation. So I'm going to put a minus 1 in there. If your horizontal axis is like January, February, March, which is actually text, you don't need this minus 1. But since ours is an actual value of a date and it is a number, I need to subtract 1. All right, second logical test that we need to do. We, we're just going to simply go check and see if F2 is already a not applicable. So there's is an A. I'm going to go over here and click in F2 and end my parentheses. So if it's already an NA uh, because we're excluding that data point, then let's just say yes. If it is NA, then this logical test is true. Therefore, if it's true, once again, we're going to put in the not applicable. All right, third logical test. This is just a little bit more tricky. We're going to do an AND function in here. And so within this AND function, what I want to do is we want to test two different things. Um, so the first thing that we want to do is we want to test the data point um, right above the current point uh, place that we're at. So since we're in column I, we want to check the, and we're in row 2, we want to check and see if uh, is NA, and we want to check I1. All right, so once we've checked that I1 is NA, um, that's first part of this AND statement. So both of these things need to be true. That's going to say, well, if NA is right above us, then maybe uh, we might be at the end of a line segment. Let's, um, let's check that. And then the other condition that we want to do is we want to do a count, kind of like we did a count of H2 to H2 with one side of it locked down. We want to do a count of our column as well. And in this case, we're going to do I and then the dollar sign 1. So we're going to count from the cell above. And then we're just going to continue to copy that down and leave that as a relative reference. So we're locking down one end of our count. And we are uh, having that go all the way down. Let's go ahead and check and see if everything works out. We have all of our OR statements wrapped. We have all of our uh, counts wrapped. And if I hit Enter, you'll see that we have the data point of 10. So it is looking over here and it is saying, hey, is this a number um, and or is it not applicable? So uh, uh, let's kind of go up to our formula bar, our ribbon. Let's go to evaluate formula and let's actually go ahead and take a look at this. So this is saying, all right, so there's an OR statement, evaluate H2. So H2 count is 1. We're subtracting 1 hit evaluate and that's a zero so that's going to be false. Zero is always false in Excel. Then we're going to check F2. Is F2 a not applicable? It is not so that is a 10 and therefore it's false. Now we get into this AND statement. Is I1 the one right, the point right above where we are right now? Is I1 NA? Um, no it is not. And then it's also going to count right above us. We have no number above us, uh, as well as uh, going down um, to one above where we are. And so the count of that is going to be 0. So both of those are going to be returning false. So two falses is a false, and everything is false. Therefore, it's not going to put in NA. It's going to put down our formula in F2. And so that's how we get 10. So now that we've got this done, we're going to highlight these two areas. 
H1 and, or H2 and I2. We're just going to copy this all the way down. Look at this. It has uh, copied down our axis, which is there we are, and then it's copied our first line segment and it's put not applicable in everything else. Now what we need to do is let's go ahead and copy um, from I1 all the way down to I11 because this will make our uh, line 1 just copy right over with Excel functions that happen. Line 2, line 3, line 4, line 5 with the fill handle. And then let's look at line 2. Line 2 is going to put in an NA over here because we've already got a count greater than uh, or equal to 1 over here. And so you can see that's going to do NA for all of those data points. Here it's looking over at F2 and it is already a not applicable. Then it's going to go down here and it's going to check and say, well, to the left we have not applicable. We're not not applicable in F2. We don't have any other line segments above us. Uh, so let's go ahead and find that value. And uh, it just works beautifully, I think, anyway. Kind of a simple formula, but it's creating our line segments. Now, what we've done here is we've got five line segments. I've got five here um, because we need one for the total number of possible data points that we have divided by two, because two points make up a line. And if we have lots of not applicables, um, the most we would have would be five data points in here, uh, just kind of streaming along as data points. If we have two connected, which make a line, um, we'll either have it all in one, or if it's broken up with not applicables, the most we would ever have is five. So we're getting pretty close to what we want to do. Uh, we just want to highlight this range now, go up to our insert ribbon, let's go to the line function, uh, and we're going to do line with markers. And let's go ahead and take a look at that one up here just a little bit. And uh, so as you can see, it's created our line segments. Uh, so we've got a blue line segment here, but then our next line segments don't quite line up because they're actually totally different lines. They're, we're going to make them look like it's all the same line with gaps. So how we do that is we come in and select any one of the other line segments and hit Control-1. From Control-1, we, we want to do marker options. We want to change our built-in to a diamond, which is what the first one is. We want to change our marker fill to solid, and we're going to choose a color of blue. We're going to do a line color of solid, and we're going to make it, instead of automatic, which it would choose red, we're going to force it to be blue. And then our marker lines, uh, markers have line colors around them. We don't want those to be automatic. We always want to force it to our single color. All right, so uh, what you can see that now that we've done that, we've got two line segments that look very similar. It's easy enough to do it on the rest of them. You just highlight the line, marker options built in. Uh, we're going to do the diamond. Marker fill solid, it's already got our blue choice. Line color solid, it's already got our blue choice. Marker line color solid, and it's already got our blue choice. And you can see that we have done it for the line segments that are visible. You also need to do this for the line segments that are not visible. You can uh, do this in lots of different ways. Go to my blog and see how you can select an unselectable data series uh, to see how you can get those. Uh, for this purpose here, you just have to find those ones. You can just click on them and uh, move in my arrow keys. We can ultimately find and change those lines as well. If you don't change those lines, as soon as you enter a data point uh, where you've got something that is going to show that other line segment, um, it will it will show up as purple and diamonds. So it's not quite what we want to do, but uh, I'm just not going to, you can go figure out how to do that. Just change each one of those. Last thing we need to do is just delete our chart junk, chart junk by selecting the legend and hit our delete key. So we have three separate line segments there. Uh, using the NA formula and creating gaps in our lines at Excel just will fill in those gaps for you. Uh, so it's easy enough to do once you understand the formula a little bit better. There's a complete step-by-step -step tutorial uh, on my blog at excel-dashboardtemplates.com. Also uh, out there we have a file template download, so an Excel dashboard download of this technique so that you can try it for yourself. So head on over there. Also don't forget to subscribe to my uh, video channel and so that you're sure to get the next video delivered directly to your inbox. Thank you.